Driftaway Queenstown is New Zealand's newest holiday park. It opened in March 2022 and it's located in the Frankton suburb of Queenstown, which is the airport suburb. The receptionist who greeted me was the friendliest receptionist I've seen so far at a holiday park. So they have fantastic service as well as having beautiful new facilities. To top it off, their prices were reasonable when I stayed in November, especially since they provide free Wi-Fi. It was the cheapest holiday park in the Queenstown region when I stayed. I definitely recommend this park, and I think all travellers coming to the Queenstown region should spend at least one night here. It's worth it just to see the beautiful sunsets over Lake Wakatipu. I really do think you should book in advance if you're staying here during the busy peak tourist season. Frankton is popular with tourists because of all the bars, restaurants and shops, and tourists also want to stay in the suburb on their first and last nights in Queenstown before flying out from the airport, so do make sure you book in advance. When I stayed, every site was booked, so don't book at the last minute. As I said, Wi-Fi is free. The speed test shows it was reasonably fast for New Zealand, as we don't have the fastest internet out here. The upload speed was pretty good, so I was able to upload a video. As with all holiday parks I've stayed in, the check-in time is 2pm and the check-out time is 10am. I was given a handy park map when I arrived, but you really don't need one to find your way around the communal facilities here. The holiday park is fairly small and there is only one building where the bathrooms, kitchen, games room and laundry room are kept, so it's not like some of the larger parks I've stayed in that have two or three kitchens and bathroom blocks. This building is located right in the middle so you won't have any difficulty finding it. The kitchen is beautiful, spacious and sunny, with five kitchen sinks and good countertops for food preparation. The decor is made to look like you're at home rather than in a holiday park. I love this decor as it really did make it feel homely and comfortable. Out of the holiday parks I've stayed in, this one was my favourite in terms of decor. Sliding doors lead to the patio where there's another sink outside next to the barbecue area. Those using the barbecues get a stunning view of Lake Wakatipu, where you'll find breathtaking sunsets every single night. Here in the South Island we've always had stunning sunsets every night, but this location is particularly beautiful as the golden colours of the sunset appear above the hills behind the communal block, and then the sun disappears over the lake in the other direction. There is a second barbecue area and sink next to the playground. The playground has a slide and a jumping pillow. The bathrooms are lovely also. You don't have to pay any extra to use the shower. Some holiday parks in New Zealand charge a dollar or two 
to use the shower but these hot showers are free and they're not timed either so it won't cut off after six minutes The disabled toilet doubles as a family bathroom with a children's bathtub in it, so parents can shower while their children play in the bathtub. The bathrooms were clean and tidy as you can see in the photos. The kitchen was also clean and tidy. The lower floor has a living room with a TV and couches, and there's a games room. The laundry has six washing machines and six dryers. The cost is a little bit too expensive though at $5 per wash. Normally in New Zealand, holiday parks charge between $2 and $4 for a wash, so this is the most expensive I've seen. These metal closets here, I think these are for drying wet weather gear. You can hang up wet coats and ski pants and put a padlock on the door to stop people stealing them while they're drying. My powered side came with a fresh water tap with a hose, which is handy. The holiday park does not provide grey water drains near the sites, so you will have to dispose of shower water at the dump station, which is located outside the communal facilities. Since they have really nice showers at this park, most people would choose to use their facilities rather than their own RV shower anyway. Each Lakeview powered site has a concrete platform to park on, so you won't have to worry about walking on muddy grass and noisy gravel. There are cheaper powered sites available on the grass that don't have a Lakeview, so if you're looking for a cheaper option, you can book the grass sites. The downside of the Lakeview sites is that if you're in a caravan, they haven't allowed any space for your tow vehicle to park in. If you look at my photo here, this couple has parked their tow vehicle in front of their caravan, which is what we normally do in New Zealand, so what they've done is fine, but this holiday park hasn't allowed enough space for them, so their vehicle was in my way when I was trying to drive in and reverse into my spot. So do keep in mind that these spots are very difficult for caravans to reverse into. I saw one foreign guy take around 30 attempts to reverse his caravan into his spot because these spaces are so short and the park is crowded, plus there are trees and a picnic table on these sites which make it even worse. So if you're not experienced with caravan reversing, it can take several attempts to get it right. If you're traveling in a smaller rental van, you won't have these problems, so it'll be fine. I stayed in November, which is the end of spring in New Zealand, so the prices weren't as expensive as they normally would be in summer and winter. The price at the time that I stayed, I paid $35 per night for my powered site, and my New Zealand Motor Caravan Association membership discount was 15%. The 15% was because I booked three nights. In summertime during the peak season around February, Expect to pay double what I paid for the park because it becomes extremely popular in February and you will need to book in advance, even with the higher summer prices. The price for the site that I was on goes up to about $74 per night in summer, so it's quite a lot more. It's standard in New Zealand for holiday parks to double their prices in February. This park does allow dogs, but only if you're staying in your own RV or tent, not in one of their cabins. And you do have to ask at the time of your booking if you're allowed to bring a dog so they can place you in the dog owner section. I love the location of this park. 
Initially when I booked online I thought Frankton looked a bit industrial because of the airport, but it's actually full of restaurants and shops, plus it's easy to drive to the centre of Queenstown to see the gardens or sites there, and it's also convenient if you want to drive in the opposite direction towards Arrowtown or Gibston where the vineyards are. There are also water taxis available from the lakefront that you can catch to get to the central part of Queenstown. Across the road from the Holiday Park is a nice bar that has great customer service. They have a covered outdoor section that you can sit in if it rains. I bought their potato chip poutine which I enjoyed while looking at the stunning view they have of Lake Wakatipu. Afterwards I went for a nice walk to look at the bridge. The water is stunning so it's worth taking a walk over to see it. In the opposite direction you can walk to the boat sheds and have a hot drink at the boat shed cafe. The obvious downside of being located in Frankton is that the planes are somewhat noisy as they pass over Lake Wakatipu from the airport. The planes don't actually fly over the top of the holiday park, so it's not that bad but still quite noticeable. The flight curfew at Queenstown Airport is 10pm, so you don't have to worry about noisy planes taking off after 10pm as that is illegal. If you're out and about doing tourist activities during the day, you won't notice the planes, so the planes shouldn't bother you much. Obviously you can't fly photography drones anywhere in Frankton or Queenstown due to the proximity of the airport, so no drones here. This holiday park can be a bit noisy as it tends to attract a younger crowd. Many of their guests are under the age of 30. So if you're looking for a quiet holiday park near a forest with birds singing, you're not going to find it at this city holiday park. I did find it nice and peaceful the first two nights, but on weekend nights there are people getting drunk and making noise. All of the noisy drunk people were New Zealanders, not foreign tourists. I saw an old Middle Eastern woman spitting off the balcony into the playground, which is absolutely disgusting and very offensive, but aside from her, all the other tourists were respectful of each other, so she was the only bad tourist I saw in the whole place. The holiday park reception is normally open from 7.30am to 9pm, but they do have employees at the park monitoring noisy and badly behaved guests after 9pm, so you can still report problems after the office closes at 9pm. I felt safe at this holiday park, so if you're travelling alone it is a good choice for you. I didn't have any items stolen here nor did I hear of any other guests losing items due to theft. The holiday park has a fence around the front of it next to the lake to stop pedestrians wandering up into the holiday park. The downside is that you can't just walk down to the lake for a swim and instead you have to walk back up to the park entrance and walk around, but it's worth it to feel safe knowing that people on the lakefront can't just wander up into the holiday park and steal your things. Overall, I'd highly recommend this holiday park and it was definitely memorable for me because of the views and the beautiful sunsets and also the great customer service. You should definitely add this park to your travel plans. Happy travels, bye!